Okay, good morning everyone. Tad Stevens, cpethink.com here. Uh, I am here with Yoel Israel, uh, who is going to be our presenter today. Yoel, are you there? Yeah, how you doing? Doing great, okay. A few housekeeping items. Uh, we will show you how to get your certificate of completion at the end of the webinar, plus you will receive an email about an hour afterwards that will have a link. Um, that you can click and go to that page and get your certificate. Uh, again, my name is Tad Stevens. I am uh, the director here at cpethink.com and this morning we're going to talk about how to get new clients to call your firm. This is webinar number one of this series and we're also going to go through step by step how you set it up and why it is a good idea for you to do it. Uh, learning objectives for today. At the end of this webinar, you're going to be able to describe and explain where searches uh, for CPAs in the United States are coming from, uh, what devices, what areas, things like that. You're also going to be able to create or set up a Google AdWords call only ad campaign. And we'll explain later and while we go is why it's a call only and we're not just talking about general AdWords. Uh, you're also going to be able to describe and explain why a Google AdWords campaign, specifically call only in this situation, uh, may be the best lead gen source for CPAs and CPA firms in the pay-per-click market. So, y'all, I am going to give you the presentation. Let me go to the next screen okay. first. And then I will change that here. Okay, there you go. All right, cool. All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, first and foremost, before I even introduce myself, if you guys have any questions at all, just type it in uh, into the comments, and Tad will read it off. Uh, please feel free to interrupt me with any questions you might have. Any question you have, most likely everyone else, many others will have it too. Um, so a little bit about myself. I'm a Google partner. That means I have exclusive access to Google that very few people have. It ensures that I'm always on top of best practices and I'm always providing the best for my clients. They're actually Google bots that goes through my clients' accounts to ensure that I have all the proper um, ad extensions and keywords and everything is set up appropriately for according to Google's best practices to ensure best results. Um, and Google has even recommended me here um, from Google Partners, uh, which um, I'm very happy that they have. And I'm also AdWords certified and also Google Analytics certified. So, Tad, you want to go ahead with the first polling question? You bet. Okay. Pick a poll here. Launch the poll. How long have you been using PPC or AdWords? Either one. So, if you've been using PPC on LinkedIn or Facebook or anything, this counts as uh, that question as well. So, we're just trying to get an idea of how much exposure you have had to pay-per-click advertising, uh, online advertising for a fee on the Internet. If everyone would take a few minutes, or a few minutes, excuse me, a few seconds to answer this. Um, and we're not grading these. Again, these are just polling questions that NASBA requires per the uh, AICPA NASBA guidelines to make sure everybody's paying attention in, at their PC. So it looks like everybody, oh, no, nope, got about 80, 81% voted. A few people hadn't voted. Just please click a uh, button on there. We'll give you another three seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, close the poll and we'll share the results. Okay, 85% never have, 8% have one to five years, and five years way too long is 8%. Uh, I fall into that five plus years category just in case anybody is interested in that. Okay, yo, back to you. All right, I, I also fall into the five plus years. Uh, I'm impressed by anyone that's using it, um, especially in many in the service industry it's very hard. People don't often think about the opportunities that come up with uh, digital marketing and digital advertising. Um, they're new and they're great because they're trackable. So, for example, Google searches in the count, you know, for like counting tax prep, reach almost a million a year uh, in the states. And we want to think about this for a second. Is well, just touching on, is that let's say you hypothetically put up a billboard, you put something in a magazine, or you bought any other kind of traditional ad. You don't know how many people are actively looking for it, how many people that saw your ad, let alone how many people are interested in it. And that's what's actually unique about online advertising. And Google Ads in particular is that you can show your ad exactly to the person who searches for it at that very moment. And not just that, we can make many ads and you can choose which ad would target what keywords. So 
hypothetically, if someone's searching for an inexpensive CPA, uh, some, a tax preparer, we can have an ad that has exactly those words and other words that would be related to that. And same thing if they are, let's say, they're looking for just uh, I don't know, a general accountant or any other accounting services or CPA services, anything that they might search for, you can provide that in the ad so you can directly reach out to them and more likely get them to become a client of yours. Now, there are a few things that comes on Google, and this can be really overwhelming, especially for those who've never been on AdWords. So this is actually really easy to understand if you just ignore the, the words. So if you look here at Google search, we, just, we, just, we go to google.com, and what you search for, like I just mentioned, and the top four results before the organic results are advertisements. And these are advertisements that we can create to target the people that you want to show your ads to and based on the keywords. YouTube, as you know, if many of you use YouTube, uh, it's the second most search engine, second most used search engine in the world after Google. Um, there are ads sometimes before, uh, before, video, before you're watching a video, sometimes in the middle if it's a long one or even at the end, and, they're even, uh, and there, are, there are other ads on YouTube too, which I'll get to later, that falls in here. Then there's AdMobile, AdMob. AdMobile is, is especially if you want to reach uh, the younger, uh, younger generation, obviously more people are on mobile, and males in particular respond well to mobile ads. And this is very good for many, many um, this they say is the best actually demographic for those wanting to reach entrepreneurs and small business people. So many, uh, many of these people that might want a CPA, uh, this is where they would find among the younger ones that are interested in uh, reacting to an advertisement that they see online. Google Display Network is if you've been to basically any website that you see any picture ads, that's Google Display Network. This also includes the picture ads on the side of YouTube, not the rolling videos. And 64% of online population have an active Gmail account. You might not notice this um, on the top of your Google sometimes. You have a very small ad in text. Um, so those are the main ones for Google. We're only going to predominantly going to focus on uh, right here, Google Search. And what we're going to really focus on Google Search on mobile because that's the future. Google has said that. Google has taken action to make that change, and so has Facebook. And I'm going to give you an example. Um, two things. First off, uh, two examples, one by Facebook and one by Google. Facebook used to have, and I don't know if you remember this, and they think they still have it, they're getting rid of it, ads on the right side of your home page, you know, of your news feed. They're getting rid of those ads in the future because those aren't on mobile, there's no room for ads on the right, only for your news feed ads. Google's doing the same thing. They already did that a few months ago. They got rid of ads on the right side. It used to be ads on the top, above the organic results, on the right side, and then used to be on the bottom. So they got rid of all the ads on the right because you can't view them on mobile. So they want to kind of because mobile is now the predominant source uh, of that is the predominant way that, that people use the internet, whether it's social media, Google, or any news sites, and people don't want to don't want to swipe their slide their screen left to right to read ads, they only want to slide up and down. So this, this is where we're heading and this is where your ads need to be. And especially if you're going to be progressive about it, since you have the first mover advantage and it's not a lot of competition, you can get even more leads for much cheaper prices. So this is the old school method, method right? Is that you do yellow pages, print ads, billboards, and like business groups. But unfortunately people aren't here anymore. People, the last time you know people had like, uh, I don't know, I forget what it's called, a phone book. Right, people actually look at print ads, and this is how people would first think about you. And in consideration, this is how uh, they they call you, or they'd actually visit you, they request a quote, they do some comps, and then decision would they make an agreement to make a purchase. And this is how they would move. Uh, this is how they used to do it. And shortly after, we're gonna we're gonna have a polling question, and then we're gonna get into the digital aspect and how things have revolutionized, and how in order for you to the people of people in your industry in your area, you're going to have to go to online advertising. All right, Tad, you want to take away the next question? Yeah, sure. And this question, I do apologize. This this audience is a little bit geared away from this, but it is is still important. Um, do you currently use AdWords or any other PPC networks? Uh, this is just trying to get an idea of which ones you do use. And but let's change this a little bit. Uh, if you are thinking about using one of these, which one would you use? So like if you don't currently use AdWords or any other PPC networks and you are thinking about doing LinkedIn, uh, click LinkedIn just so we can get an idea 
uh, of which ones are on your mind. Uh, because we're going to uh, focus predominantly on AdWords this morning, but there are others out there, and they are important, and they do serve a purpose depending on what you're trying to do. So, okay, uh, just a few more people. Give it three more seconds. Three, two, one. Close. Okay, share the results. Interesting. Nobody on AdWords or Bing. Uh, LinkedIn has a pretty good presence. And then Facebook. Okay. And uh, about half um, are none. So very interesting. Thank you, everyone. Y'all, I'm going to give it back to you. All right. Fabulous. All right. So search volume. Let's get into it. All right. So these are very general terms, and there are many more terms that get more specific, right? You've got CPA auditor, CPA's accounting, accountant, audit. So these might be terms that people are searching for. These are phrase match. These are um, so these are these are basically keywords that people write into Google, and these are the results that we're getting. And we're getting, like I mentioned earlier, about an, on average almost a million a month. Now oh, this is what's important. Hey, what's, y'all, go ahead. Uh, real quickly, yeah. starting we we're going from phrase to exact. Would you explain real quickly? We got one question on what's phrase match or March. Okay, so and it's misspelled, but we were March. sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Um, phrase, they're the right keywords, and when I build the campaign, I'm actually, I'll am go into this, and if I don't remind me, I forget okay. it, which I shouldn't know. Uh, but what it is, in, in general, is that you you want to, there, you can target what people write into Google to have certain ads you want to display. So, for example, if they, what if someone's, someone's writing, if you just have a keyword, uh, okay, so if someone just, if you have a regular broad match, Anyone that writes anything related to, let's just use the word auditor or any synonyms, your ad would show up. And then there's something called broad match, which what it does is anyone that searches auditor, but it can be misspelled or different alterations of that word. But that also includes other words. So like auditor in my in Philadelphia, right? Local auditors, right? Inexpensive auditors, auditor quote, for example. All those will show up. Now phrase match is what it does is it takes an exact phrase um, that people write into Google. So this is like, it would be like in quotes. When you search in Google or in any search engine in quotes, they find that exact phrase that matches, not the exact, the exact letters, into those quotes that show up. So if you want to find like, um, some people might be searching like, um, you know, Philadelphia auditors, or, uh, or if there's a certain phrase that people use that they search for, uh, you know, uh, tax prep 2016. Um, then only those people will see those keywords, people that search those exact phrase. Um, and then this exact match, it, oh, oh, it's that phrase, but there can also be more words before and after. So you might put in um, like, a, uh, like CPAs Philadelphia, and someone might search for business CPAs Philadelphia. If you have CPA Philadelphia in a phrase match, it will come up. But now if you use exact match CPA Philadelphia, but someone searches business CPA Philadelphia, it will not come up because you're only looking for those exact words as opposed to the phrase. So these are the phrase map, which is the best way to really measure it, uh, to measure volume, is that you use a few words and then use phrase match, and that's the most accurate way to find, to find the volume. Uh, next up here is we have, so this is actually, this is what makes it uh, wonderful in the industry. Uh, what Google does is they take, they have a keyword planning, um, tool in Google AdWords. And you can put in certain keywords and they can tell you how competitive it is um, for these keywords. Meaning um, how many people are actively bidding on these keywords and it gives you an idea because it's supply and demand whether they whether it's considered expensive or inexpensive. So as you see almost all accounting terms are inexpensive. Now these suggested bids, these are to be on the top of Google. You don't have to be that high to bid for that much per click. Also keep in mind, you never actually seldom ever pay your full bid. That's the most you're willing to pay for a click. Often it's much less. And these are, here's uh, the last three years, uh, three complete years of trends for people searching for CPAs. And uh, it's kind of fun just to see these trends. You see actually the accuracy of Google here is how the drop here is obviously after April 15th. And then you see all these last minute people right here. That that's the big spike. And then you see like uh, Independence Day weekend, and even some people towards the end of the summer and August, and here we have Thanksgiving and Christmas break. So you see that there's a direct correlation. Uh, there's a direct correlation here. All right, take action. Now, if you have a website, do this. You can write this down. Um, and we'll get this to you later. There's a long link here. We'll send it to you so you can click on the link and try it yourself. 
what you do is you click this link, it's by Google, so think with Google, and it tests your site to see how good and how responsive it is uh, for desktop and for mobile. And the reason why is because mobile is the future and you need to be fast, and people extremely, extremely have no attention span. They don't read everything, they go through things very quickly, especially you know, people swipe through their phones quickly. So if your page doesn't load in two seconds, three seconds, people literally hit the back button and just say forget it. It's not worth going to your page. It's just starting to take this long to load. People don't have the attention span, particularly when they're looking at their phone. Um, so I highly recommend trying these out and putting these in. This is a great free service, free tool that Google uses. It literally takes three seconds. You click the link and put in your put in your website, like cpthink.com, and you'll see for yourself. All right, uh, another polling question. And if we have any other questions also, please uh, feel free to answer them to Tad. Tad, read them to me, and I'll answer them. Okay, will do. I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll. What is keeping you from AdWords? Um, and this would apply to anyone. And I want to... Uh, emphasize right here not so much on LinkedIn or Facebook but AdWords specifically because nobody picked AdWords in the last polling question so uh, if you would let us know because and I'll let uh, Yoel uh, speak to this as well but for my business and my business is online is AdWords is my primary platform for PPC for pay-per-click and the reason is because people are searching for something at that point in time I don't rely as much on Facebook or LinkedIn because people did, don't go to LinkedIn to look for me they go to LinkedIn to look for whatever it is they're looking for and they may see me difference is uh, AdWords is for search and LinkedIn and Facebook are more for um, oh people just ha happening upon you but y'all if you want to talk to that for just a little bit that's fine too uh, sure it's actually really there's a huge difference between let's say uh, Google and Amazon and Bing, which are search engines, and to an extent Pinterest, but I won't talk about that because it's not going to be our target audience. And uh, say and Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, the difference is, is is very simple. You make an ad based on what people are actively searching for, and when they actively search for that, and based on other things that you choose now, if you search for their location, uh, their and all kinds of and all other variables. Uh, demographics, they see your ad. And so therefore, they're already low funnel. They're already ready to make a, they're at the decision point, they're at the action point of their, of whatever they're trying to do. They're already researching and getting ready. However, if you have something, if you have a product or service that people don't know exists, so let's say you have a webinar coming up, um, then so people don't know it exists, a great place to put that isn't on Google because people aren't searching for, you know, CPA, CPE credit webinars, as, as much as they are, maybe you can target people who are CPAs on LinkedIn or Facebook and let them know about this free webinar that they can get credits for. So one is really to target people who are actively looking and low hanging, uh, low, lower funnel. And then the other, and then the Facebook and LinkedIn, is to target people, you target them by their interests, their demographics, uh, and other information that you know about them because that they've interacted with that with the social network platforms and even show them ads that are related to them so they can get to know you, your brand, and other things they wouldn't know about otherwise or think to search. Did okay. that answer the question? That is a super answer, much better than mine. Okay, I'm going to share the poll here and see what we have. Uh, what keeps you from using AdWords? Uh, nothing now that I have a plan. Outstanding. Uh, not enough time to implement. I understand that. Exactly. I mean, that, that is me most of the time. Don't see the ROI in PPC ads too expensive or won't work. Hopefully, we're going to show you a way to solve that problem here in about five minutes or less. Uh, someone else does that. That is great. I wish they. I had somebody. I do have somebody. What am I talking about? I have y'all. Uh, does not apply to me, 25%. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for your answer. And y'all, I'm going to give it back to you. Awesome. And people that doesn't apply to you, uh, you're actually going to get a really interesting, you're really going to learn a lot also. Uh, and there, there's a lot to learn here with AdWords, and it's really cool. Because you'll understand that why is Google such a huge business, how do they make so much money, and it's because of their advertising, that's their revenue, and because it works, and that's why people use it. And that's why I'm, I highly, I think some people, everyone should be using Google AdWords in one way or another. Search may not be for you. But display might be. And I'll get to this in a second. So um, I'll start at the top. I'll come around counterclockwise. So consumers use the hub. Uh, the web is a hub. Now I want to go back. I want to contrast that with this, which is the old 
basically awareness, consideration, and decision, how people used to do things, and these don't exist anymore. Because people aren't even looking at billboards anymore. When they're driving, they're not looking at the road, they're looking at their phone. And try, I bet you can, if you look next time when you go for a drive, if you drive home today, look around the people beside you, and you'll see a good chunk of them aren't looking at the road. They're not even looking at in the mirror, they're looking at their phone more than anything. And so billboards, these old methods, people have learned to block them out. Your focus is now on the screen, as yours is right now and mine. Online video, 69% of Americans write to watch YouTube. Uh, YouTube is the number one video site in the world. I'm sure I don't have to tell you. It's a great place to actually show uh, if you want, if you have video-related ads that you think can capture people, often with humor. That's a great way. That's uh, where YouTube is the best place uh, is the best place to advertise. And YouTube is owned by Google. And that's why you can use Google AdWords to advertise on YouTube. You can also do some remarketing. Remarketing is when someone's already been to your website. And what you can do is you can show them ads after they've been to your site. You might have seen this maybe you've like been to a website and then suddenly start seeing ads that are related to it throughout the internet. That's called remarketing. And you can do that too for other people that have, let's say, been to your site if you have one. Um, and so they can start seeing your ads. And so you can people been to your website, not just can they see ads throughout the internet, but they can also see ads when they're on YouTube. Online reviews, 71% check online reviews before buying. Uh, this is a lot about Amazon, um, particularly a lot of people, like many people don't even buy from Amazon, but they just look at reviews for things, so they get an idea of what to buy and what not to buy. Um, and the other thing is here is search, which is what we're going to talk about. 64% of research online before purchasing. So uh, when people buy things online, they always want to do the research. There are two forms of research here. So of the 71%, all 64 are searching it. See, this 64% is included in 71, because you have to search for online reviews. So that's just to get an idea. And uh, display ads, and this goes back to kind of what I was saying a moment ago about Facebook and LinkedIn, is that these are ads that you see online on certain websites, and you're not actively searching for it. So it's like Facebook ads. So you can actually target people based on interests and topics, and you can target people based on keywords that might be related to that website. You can even also target your ads only on certain websites that you want. You can actually list them. So there's a lot of there's a lot of strength in advertising that way. And then there's mobile, which we're going to go into a little bit more, uh, which I'm sure you've all seen those ads, which in general, in my opinion, outside of like Facebook and Google search, I do not recommend mobile ads. They are too small, they're too much of a pain in the butt. Um, and they're hard to like X out of them, or they're taking up your so people scroll right by them. So I think unless they're in Facebook, so they look like they're naturally in the Facebook, in their Facebook news feed, or if it's in the search, which is extremely powerful, we're going to get into a moment. It's a great place to it. Is is where I suggest. Um, and social media, more like my product recommended by a friend. And uh, Facebook has that sometimes to see like recommend like like a page or buy some product, and they'll show like this friend and that friend like your product. Um, and so that actually is phenomenal, the, what you can do with the social pressure of getting someone to click on your ad to get more of an idea of what you do. I want to just recap for a second and, um, and go a little bit back into mobile. Is that it is, the, it is the best way to reach people if you want your phone to ring and for many service industries. Uh, I have clients that are dentists and doctors and lawyers and also other accountants and they want the phone to ring and other actual random stuff like so many custom cupolas and they're, they make a big chunk of their money by having their phone ring because they can sell their product on the phone. And what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk through this. I'm going to make this ad for you. You're going to watch me make it. You'll see how easy it is. Um, and what it does is when people search for anything on Google on their phone, which they do more than on their computer now, I know it's hard to believe, and uh, they will see an ad at the top of Google, which is setting for again, an ad that we can create based on keywords, and it will say, call now with the, with the green phone logo. And if they click the ad, it actually dials your, your phone number. It's phenomenal if you take calls. And all this, all these ways how you can interact with people to help them choose a CPA or an accounting firm. These are all different methods of PPC, not only Google. Uh, so like the ones that Tad mentioned in the last poll. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about mobile and making your phone ring and getting new clients. Um, I think you'll be very happy with the results. So what are these calls worth? So what if you only get two calls a month? How much is that worth to you? You have to think how much is your customer worth? I mean, you can actually reverse engineer it, and you can make you can decide and tell Google this is how much I'm willing to pay per call. And so therefore, you're not paying more than what you're willing to. You're not paying more than what you need. You're not paying more than what you're willing to pay. 
uh, per lead. Um, and if you have a problem with it, the great thing is you shut them off right away, as opposed to traditional. If it's not working out, you know, you lock in yourself 30 days, 90 days on some billboards, some even longer, and if it's not working out, you don't get to cancel in the middle. You're stuck with it. You're stuck with the long-term uh, um, advertising. What if you want to pull your advertising, you want to change your promotion, uh, whatever you're, you're promoting and your advertising, and your advertisements, you can't. If you want to promote a sale, it's too late. You already have your traditional up. That's what's great about um, having it online and with Google AdWords is you can edit them instantly or bring them down. And this is easiest and cheapest. Uh, at this time, you're assuming best ROI way to do a pay-per-click. Prospects and they will find. Um, a really wise man, Tad Stevens, he was a Greek philosopher. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and it's true. And I'm going to prove it. I'm going to build it for you. I'm going to build one out, and you'll see for yourself. And uh, so let's make a call only campaign together. Let's get to work. So I am taking here to... This is a, a blank campaign. Uh, we're going to go to campaigns, and they actually have two YouTube video ones already here. Uh, this is basically it's an inactive campaign. That's why I'm using it. And we're going to build a call on to watch how fast it is. And obviously, if I ask you to do this, it would take me like literally a couple minutes to do myself. But since I'm going to talk to you, it'll take a little longer. Um, so your this is your AdWords. This is your dashboard. And you see your list of your campaigns here, and also on the side. And other opportunities and things you can do here, your different tools, reporting, opportunities you can do. Um, and these are other things we all get to, and, uh, maybe another time on another webinar. So we're going we're gonna to create a campaign, and it's search network only. Right? We're only interested in people searching. That's what we're doing. And then what we're going to do is, let's call this call only CPAs. Right? And search network only, and we're going to call only. Okay. We can do okay. Actually. Okay, and call only as I encourage people to call your business. That we're going to focus on on this campaign. And we're going to use a Google network and search partners. There are other search engines that have ads and use Google ads. Uh, I think Craigslist, sometimes Craigslist has ads and they use Google. Um, there's some other search engines and other places where they actually use uh, Google ads. So this is the search network. Uh, so we're going to include it here also. And so let's just say, let's put in zip code where I'm from, 19115, Northeast Philly. Actually, you know what, let's do an advanced search. Watch this. So let's say I don't want to leave my house much, right? So I can put 19115, and let's put a uh, five-mile radius. Boom, there it is. And my house is right there. Um, and let's add it. I'm going to the Delaware River. That's going to be our targeting. Done. That's it. You've now done the targeting where you want your ads. Now, these are other languages that are spoken in the area if I want to target them. I do not. Let's say I only want to speak with English speakers because I only speak English. Um, as much as Spanish I might have taken in high school, I don't remember much. Um, here, what you can do is, and this is important, this is what I touched on the last slide, how much, how much you will to pay. So you can choose how much you want to pay per click, which I think is a good place to start off. But you can also do the target cost per acquisition and your call to CPA and your cost per cost per acquisition is going to be after we set it up, we're going to set up kind of, um, an acquisition will be a connected phone call for a certain amount of time that we decide. So let's say I will say that let's say up I said at 30 seconds because you want the phone to connect and you want to make sure that it's relevant. So if let's say they call and it turns out it doesn't work out well, you're probably, you know, oh, wrong number, which isn't going to happen, or um, they thought you might be a different kind of CPA, who knows what, whatever it is, we want to make sure it's relevant, so we want to keep them on the phone. So there's target CPA. So let's say a connected phone call is worth, let's say, $50 to you. And let's say your budget per day, how much you're willing to spend for this campaign. So let's say you're willing to spend also $50 per day. So you're willing to have average one call per day, let's say. Um, here's more advanced methods. I'll walk you through it. If you want to show your ads faster, or do you want to? Obviously, we're limited to show our ads by how much our budget is. Now, this is the best part. So, let's say Saturday, Sunday, I don't want to work, especially I'm watching football and college football. So, what hours do I want my phone to ring? My ads will only show during this time. So, let's say, so I'm, a, I'm personally an early bird kind of guy, and actually, let's do Monday through Friday. Here you go. 7 a.m. and I'd like to go for a late afternoon run. Those are my hours, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. And that's it. And weekends off. 
It was the only time we're going to have my my uh, my phone ring. Save and continue. Okay, I just said conversion tracking first. So we're going to do that after. Usually, ideally, you said your conversion tracking is first. So we're going to do just maximize clicks, and we'll just put eight dollars cost per click. And we'll go. We'll do. We'll set up new conversion setups later. I'll, I'll demonstrate how we're going to do that. And that's it. And we can add a group. And this is the subset of your campaign. So your campaign might have different parts to it. And this is what our ad, and we're going to add group at the same time. So we're going to call this uh, call CTA. Of still loading. And so let's start with our business name. So let's say we do um, Philadelphia CPA experts and United States. And let's say so my phone number would be uh, 215 uh, They want me to do this. 4887700. Right? And so and you see how this is the going to look like on the top of their phone. It's going to have a call button. Just like you would if you're searching Google on your phone, you're anywhere else, and there's like, call this business. <clears throat> um, it's, it's, it's that easy. And description line on here. Need your taxes done correctly and fast. Right, you need taxes done fast. Call now to here. Call. Call now to save. How's that sound, right? Uh, call now to save the most on tax. And that's it. And you make this is display URL. This is a made up URL. It's totally made up. So what you would do is you put in your verification URL, which we'll get to in a second. Now, first what we do is we put in our verification URL. So let's say hypothetically we would do wadidigital.com, right? And then here I can put in Example will automatically take my domain from here. Now, if you don't have a website, that's fine. You can get around this, and I'll get to it in a moment. So don't worry if you don't have a website. I've set this up for clients that don't have a website. It's no problem. And then, so what I would have here is, no matter what you write here, it will automatically, the example is going to be replaced with Wadi Digital as a domain. So, uh, or I can write it all out now. So we can do wadidigital.com, right, slash CP. CPA experts, right? And that's it. And that's what your ad is going to look like. Congratulations, you made it. Now here we're setting. Oh, so let me get you. Let's say you don't have a website. Now if you have a website, you don't have to worry. All you have to do is verify your URL. Now I can do this. What we'll do is we'll try to set it up. We'll do we'll go through everything, and then it will say that it fails, which is fine. I'm a Google partner, so I I have preferential treatment. I get special treatment at Google. I have special numbers at Google. I have this team of people that always answer my calls and fix my problems. So what we would do is, all we could do is we make a quick Facebook page for your business. It could be blank. And all we have to do is, is put your phone number on that Facebook page. And the Facebook page has to have the same business name as yours right here. And they'll go in and they'll activate it and they'll verify it for you. So even though you don't have a verified website, I can put in for the verified URL your Facebook business page, your Facebook fan page. And then you'll see the phone number. I'll call Google. They'll go through. It will take less than 24 hours, and they'll certify. They'll verify it, and you'll be off to go. And they never go to your website. They just see it because that's what people are used to seeing in their ads. You're going to see right now. Call this number, and they're going to click the call button, and they're going to start talking to you. And that's fantastic. So they don't. You don't need a website. They'll never go to your website or your Facebook page or nowhere. And then when they're done, they hang up the phone, and that's it. And they're back to where they were searching. Um, so, I mean, it, that's fantastic about it. And so here we're going to count your calls as conversions. Um, and actually, let me go through here for a second. If you, there are two ways. Either you can show your phone number, or sometimes Google can have their phone number and will forward it to your phone number. Phone number might show here instead. And then what it will do is, uh, that's how they track conversions to know how long you've been on the phone to make it a conversion. And here we do our keywords. Okay. So we're going to try to put in like just five keywords to start. I recommend a, a dozen or two. Yeah, they recommend 10 to 20. So for example, now keep in mind, everyone who's searching is searching from 7 a.m. Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday, and are in 19115 zip code plus four mile radius, basically northeast Philadelphia, right? So we're going to write, so this is what people are searching. 
Or if you know in the ad, I make another ad, so I make one keyword for Northeast Philly, one others. So I need to be your tech here. Here. We can change it to this even. To get an idea, let's see if it was this Northeast Philly tax specialist. You know what I mean? And then we can do it like that. And then they see that, they see the ad, they're searching for it. They're not searching for Philly tax specialists, but they're in the Northeast. Right? And so this is the great way that you can actually reach out to them. So I want you to put yourself into the psychology of the searcher. You're on your phone, on the bus, on the train, you're a passenger in the car, you're sitting at a Mickey D's, you're eating some food, and you're searching through, oh, crap, i got to do my taxes, freaking A, and you search for, you know, any of my taxes, right? CPA taxes. And so then what's going to happen is, as long as you're in the area in the zip code, this ad is going to show up. The most on tax, and they're like, you know, need help? Call now. It's important to put the call now, call to action in the ad, so they know they're calling, and here they know they're calling, and here they know they're calling, and uh, therefore they can, and they'll call you, can speak to you right away. And it's fantastic, right? So this CPA tax. This is broad, and let me give you an example. A broad match modifier is you actually add plus signs before every word, right? So these. Uh, you all explain so what I, I, explain what a broad okay. match modifier is, because that's important. Okay. Credit. So, I highly recommend not doing broad match without the pluses. There are two kinds. Like I, I discussed this earlier, and I'll, I'll actually I'll draw it out for you. So there's I'll draw it right here. Why not? We that's broad match modifier. This is going to be. This is phrase match. Like when you search for a certain phrase in Google, right? You put in quotes, and then there's exact match, which is in brackets, not parentheses, brackets. So if anyone searches for anything related to tax preparer, has these words in any order or in a different way, like, so someone wrote, prepare my taxes, um, tax preparation help, this, this keyword would trigger your ad. However, if you don't have this keyword, then if you search tax preparation help, these two keywords will not trigger your ad. This is for people searching for like, so tax preparer is like this, uh, prepare. Whatever it's spelled wrong, but um, is um, is in the sequence of your search term. So if you search Philadelphia tax preparer, this keyword will trigger. This keyword will trigger your ad, but this will not. This is exact. The point of exact is only people write the word uh, tax preparer is the only way they are actually going to see um, your ad if they write those exact words. So. Here are some other words that we would put in, right? So we would try tax one nine one one five, uh, tax expert, tax expert, Philly, tax help, tax expert, right? Philadelphia, right? And you think, and now you're going to ask, and many people ask this, and it's a great question: Why would you have tax expert and tax expert Philly? Wouldn't tax expert include all tax expert Philly keywords? And the answer is yes, that is correct. The thing is, we're going to, if someone searches tax expert Philly, since tax expert Philly is more closely correlated to their search term than tax expert, we will pay less uh, per click than if we just had tax expert. Because what we're doing is we're providing Google and Google searchers better services because we're actively want to target exactly what they're searching for. And therefore, Google likes that. So our ads are better correlated with what they're searching for. And we'll get discounted on our um, get a, uh, in the steeper discount on our searches. Um, so, uh, so these are all different. So these are all different terms, right? Uh, that right tax help and right need a right ten forty prepare right. Uh, I don't know IRS audit. Now these are only people in your geographical location in the time that you want. So anyone searching anything remotely to do with this with any other words, any other zip codes, anything searching within this area, they will now see the ad that you made. Now, let's say you want to target people just searching IRS terms. So then we would make another ad separately in a different ad group called, let's say, IRS, and we would make a related ad. Let's say you just want people that want local only Philly are, are actually in their search terms. So we would actually make special ads around that. So anything people search for, we can make, we can put it exactly as they wish. We can, we can set it up as they want. 
No problem. So save ad group, and I'm sure there be some things I have to. Right, the URL must start with HTTP. And y'all, while you're doing that, I want to interject. I had a little bit of a, a comment here, and it ties into something that I do. Is that, and it, this is totally uh, on the up and up. I mean, people do this all the time. Have been doing it for years. Is type in these search terms yourself and look and see what your competitors are doing, uh, and write a better ad. Write something add value that they are not adding. If you give away, say, a free 30-minute consultation. Uh, if you give away, um, I don't know, tax form. I mean, whatever it is that you add value to that they don't, uh, put it in there. And put in a keyword for it. Uh, build an alternate ad or an ad that'll switch out with it. Add value more than your than your competitors' ads uh, are for people that are searching at that time, and see which one wins. And that there's split testing in there that we can go into and we went into in other webinars. Uh, but just you know, think it think through from your um, searcher's perspective. What are they looking for? What is valuable to them? And put your ad out there like that. Okay, sorry about that. Go ahead. Okay, cool. We're done. I mean, we're we're done. I'll show you how to set up special conversions and all that um, in a moment. And uh, right, this is freezing naturally. There we go. Um, and, and that's it, it's set up. Uh, that's your ad, you can come in here to edit it, click the pencil, these keywords, some related keywords and other things will, will trigger these ads, and just in the geographical area at that time, and they'll call. Um, I wanna make one notation, so when as you guys go and compare, this is a call-only ad, which should not be confused with other mobile ads. There's your mobile ads, and are much larger than this. But there's a call only. They want room for the call, and you want to encourage calling. So Google doesn't let you use more than 35 characters and 35 characters. So they, they want to keep it short to the point, and they want to help you get calls. So you won't see call. You might not see a call only ad if you search for it on your phone. You might see more text, which you can also prepare no problem. It's not an issue. It's just as easy to make a regular campaign. Um, it's, and there's a lot more involved. But it's just easy to make. But does, uh, does anyone have any questions? Any questions right now, so far? Conversion setup and as I load it, this takes a moment to load the conversion page away, so. Uh, it, okay. Splendid. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set up conversions. So like I mentioned earlier, we already know if we get a call that connects, that connects is going to count as a conversion. Now, I don't want there to be any confusion. Uh, there are... It's not set up yet. Um, so what they have is there's a clicks and there's conversions. When someone clicks your ad, what will happen is your phone number, this is phone number, so I'll go back into it so people can see it's easier to visualize. When, when someone clicks your ad, they see your ad, they search for you know, you know, any any help with taxes, they see your ad, they click on it. Once they click it, what happens is your phone, your your phone on your on your on your smartphone will load the phone number 215-488-7700 or your phone number. And then what it's going to do is then you have to, that's considered a click. That's cost per click. You pay for that click, period. Then they can either save that number of call you later or they can press green again on their phone in their dial thing to, uh, to call you. Then that's still not a conversion. You choose what a, what a conversion is. So let's say we're going to create a conversion here. And so we're going to create a conversion. We're going to use this phone call select. Um, calls from ads using call extension or call only ads. Continue. Let's call this call only. And let's say how much is this actually sign a value? We're not going to sign a value. And like I said, you can actually choose how many seconds to consider a conversion. So it's call only, 30 seconds. That's what we're going to name it. One conversion, conversion window, so let's say they call us back within 60 days after they clicked your ad, so if they save it. Category, this is considered a lead, right? Naturally, include in conversions, that means in your columns, um, in your columns in your reporting, um, and uh, you can, uh, it shows up as a conversion. Now that pop-up said you want to go, now I have to set it up in the ad. I said you want to go straight to the ad now to set it up. And I did yes, and we'll, load the ad and we'll go back to editing the ad like you just saw momentarily um, and you'll see how we set up for ourselves. 
And we're actually we're basically done. So if any of you have any questions, uh, please ask. Anything there's such thing as a silly question, um, I'm I'm here to address them. Okay, super. While this is loading, uh, one of the things I just and I'll talk about this in just a little bit more. But one of the reasons that we're focusing on call only ads is the psychology be behind people actually getting in contact with you. Uh, people that want your services are more likely. Um, or people that call you for your services are more likely to be buyers than people filling out an opt-in form or um, sending you an email. People hide behind emails all the time. They hide um, when I used to do um, oh other type of lead generation years ago is we would buy 50 leads at a time and maybe one or two would actually answer the phone when we called them back. Keep in mind these people are calling you. These are the cream of the crop. So. Um, Compared to other lead generation services, these are what I consider to be the most likely to be buyers of any type of lead gen that you will do because they searched for the problem, they searched for a solution to their problem, they found you, and now they're calling you to ask for whatever it is they want. So keep that in mind when you're evaluating this against other services. Okay. Awesome. So you already see. So we're going to, there it is. So we go here, we already saw this. Now this loaded, our call only 30 seconds. You do this, and save ad, and you are in business. That's it. And now what they do is, it's that simple. And so now what they do is here is, now you get the conversion tracking. So let's install the ad, they clicked it, it counts as a click. And then if your call is connected for 30 seconds, you're on the phone with them, this becomes a conversion. And then you can go through your keywords and know which keywords that trigger and end up converting, which one were costing money and not. You can you can change your bid around, so on and so forth. And uh, you can see your search terms, what term keywords people search to trigger your ad, so on and so forth. Um, so if anyone has any questions, uh, this is your almost your last opportunity. Um, you can always it's never less. Um, you, can, uh, you can always contact me. Okay, hey, y'all, we right. got one. And I mentioned this, right? Think like the prospect. Yo, you can write the uh, psychology of the searcher. You can always reach out to me, yo, at wadidigital.com, on Twitter or LinkedIn. Um, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to connect. I'd like to network. Um, I'm actually redoing my website right now, and you'll see it's still being built. It's like three quarters done. Um, so uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'm always here to help. And uh, I'm happy to provide a free content. Hey, y'all. Hey, gang. I uh, think we just lost y'all there for a second. Y'all, can you hear me? Hello, y'all. Oh. Tell you what, let me uh, apologize about this. Let me um, disconnect him. I'll take the presentation back, and then we'll give it back to him in just a second. Okay. Your email, the password that you already have, somebody registered, your name, your address, your town, your city, your state, and there's the code. And that's it, you're registered. And of course, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to Tad. Um, he's got high reviews. Um, so I'm offering a unique CPA offer. Um, it's 150 It's a free audit. Um, so you have a free audit on your online marketing account. Let's look at that, another spell check. It's a mistake. And um, so basically, if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to review any of your online advertising accounts. If you have LinkedIn, if you have uh, Google AdWords or Bing or elsewhere, or anything else. Also, I'm happy to do a free 30-minute consultation. If you'd like, if you have any questions, I'm going to review and make some suggestions for you based on maybe if you have any certain kind of uh, unique targeting or your area or if you have any kind of a niche or anything you want. If you have any questions, I'm happy to give that. This is $150 value, uh, 30 minutes. Um, and the qualifier is that you don't have to commit, but you have to be willing to just be spending $1,500 a month in ad spend. Um, in order in order to get this offer. I don't want to waste your time otherwise. Um, so I thank you guys for your time. Uh, thank you for having the opportunity to share Google with you, um, Google AdWords and call-only campaigns in particular. 
I hope this insight, if you're not even going to use uh, Google AdWords, understanding where people are going to mobile and how advertising online is the present and the future. And I really hope we wish you guys all success. Um, and if you have any more questions, um, now would be the time. I see that, Tad, you're back on, right? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That's cool. Um, Tad, I went over your slide. Is there anything that you want to go over here? Anything? I just walked through them where to log in. Uh, no, I appreciate, I appreciate that. Uh, sorry about that. I uh, did have a question came up. Um, do you have to set up the ad first, or can you set up the conversion or the ad first and then link them up later, or does it matter? It does not matter. You can do either one, and I'll just show you right now. Um, either you can go to Tools, Conversions, and set it up like we did, and then when you make the, and then when you make the ad like we did and you go edit it, you can edit it and add it, or you can make the ad like we did and then do the conversions. After we made the ad, our table only went through here until our average position, and that's where it ended. Um, now we had those those following columns, the conversion columns, conversion only columns because after you set them up. So it makes no difference if you do it before or after. Okay, super. And uh, I know I cut out there and I missed my slides uh, towards the end, but I just wanted to say again that to me, the call only ads for uh, somebody in the services industry is, in my mind, the best uh, paper lead type lead generation system to start with and possibly even do long term that you can find. Um, I mean, if you think about it, what is a, what is a client worth to you? And, you know, is it worth spending three clicks, four clicks for 10 bucks a click to get a brand new client? Think about how much money you're going to make and how much you're going to spend and compare that to standing at, um, you know, a business opportunity meeting or a chamber of commerce meeting or going out for breakfast. I mean, you can get a client, I'm not saying you will, but it is possible to get a call and get a client uh, for less than it would cost you to go out to lunch with somebody. Uh, not guaranteeing it again, but just think it through like that and uh, one of the things that I do stress that you must be willing and able to do if you're going to do this kind of thing is to answer the phone or have somebody answer the phone in a pleasant voice um, that is willing to solve that person's problem. Make sure you can do that first and then go for this and if you don't like it, it doesn't work, like that slide says, turn it off. Just stop. Uh, you can do that at any time and it's almost immediate. So um, that's just my two cents. I really like uh, call-only ads. I think they are super, especially with the way everything's going to mobile. Um, and any other questions or anything for Yol? Yol, do you got anything else you want to close with or um, uh, bring up? Yeah, the, few, the future's not mobile. We're already there. You, you, <laughs> you need to, you know, be on it. And the other thing is, and if you prefer to take someone out to lunch, I'm in Philly. You can take me out any time. I have a big appetite, and, and I like to drink. So. <laughs> okay. Your Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Appreciate your time. And this will be in your um, the course will be added to your account whenever you uh, get your certificate from that that screen that that y'all showed earlier from the link that you will get uh, in about an hour. And uh, yeah, that page right there and that that link right there, cpethink.com slash yi-calloncomphp that will take you to this where you can get your certificate. The course will be added uh, to your account and we will have the video in that course that you can rewatch this as much as you would like, as often as you would like, uh, probably about two or three hours, uh, maybe towards the end of the day, but as soon as we can get it up, we will get it there. Any other questions? Anyone at all? Now is the time. Uh, we got Yol on the phone. Right, and by the way, you guys can feel free to reach out to me uh, on phone via email. Any just rare regular questions, don't hesitate. Feel free. I'm always happy to help people. I really that's my passion is helping others. Yeah, it's and, just my vehicle. Too. And you should also have the uh, the slides to this, so you'll have all the links and all the contact information. And you can also submit a ticket to cpethink.com. Just service at cpethink.com, and we will happily forward that on to Yol or answer the question if we can do that there. So, anybody else? Any questions? Uh, now is the time. Uh, I strongly encourage everyone to try this if it fits their model, their business. Um, I mean, worst case, you're gonna you're gonna lose a little bit of money, but the potential, the upside potential of this is huge um, for acquiring clients. I mean, it is one of the easiest, straightforward, quickest, fastest ways uh, to get exposure and, and to promote your goods and services to people online. 
Anybody else? Okay, Yoel, thank you very much uh, for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you, My everyone, pleasure. for attending. Uh, we are going to have more webinars in this series about how to bring clients to your firm uh, for no or low or, or uh, positive return ROI type costs. Uh, oh, those will oh, be Kevin, coming. Kevin, yeah. Kevin, what kind of, um, if you guys have any suggestions for any webinars you want regarding online marketing or online advertising, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, anything else advertising. I, I do a lot of B2B LinkedIn also. Yeah. Uh, you can actually see my YouTube page. I, I spoke at Google and all that. I mean, if you have any suggestions, we're totally here for you. And Dad and I, we're happy to make a, any idea that you might have for a webinar. We'd be happy to put together for you guys and walk you through. And we're sure if you find it interesting and helpful to you, it's obviously would be interesting and helpful to others also. Absolutely. And also, uh, check out Yoel's website. I mean, he has a ton of great information out there uh, on uh, paid advertising and uh, non-paid non, non internet marketing um, type activities as well. So, okay. Yeah, check, out my, my, check out my blogs. Those are updated. The rest of the web, a lot of the websites are still being fixed up. It'll, it'll, if it's not there now, it'll be there shortly. Okay. Thank you, right. everyone, Good again morning. for attending. Uh, and like Yoel said, any questions, let us know. I'll let Yoel know what the contact information that he gave or at service at cpethink.com. Uh, really appreciate your attendance and your participation, and we will see you on the next one. Everybody have a great day. Bye. Take care.